A number of thoughts come to mind when we say the word femininity. Current supposed definitions go a little like this. Feminine, having qualities or appearance traditionally associated with women, especially <coughs> delicacy and prettiness. When researching the term, we came across certain words which came up time and time again, such as delicate, soft and gentle. Now, don't get me wrong, these terms aren't necessarily pejorative, but neither do they seem particularly empowering or allow for much scope. It is this which we want to focus on today. So let's have a look at what feminine meant in the past and has this changed or developed over time? A magazine for teens in 1965 asked popular female actresses their views on femininity. Jane Fonda said femininity is knowing how to listen. Men love it. Connie Stevens stated that you work at being a good homemaker, making it fun and romantic. Beverly Washburn said, To be feminine, a girl's dress must be tight enough to show she's a woman, yet loose enough to show she's a lady. <laughs> if these are the opinions of such influential figures, how did that impact on the teenagers of the time? Has this perspective really changed? Or indeed moved on? What about women who want to embody more than the definition allows? I don't wear dresses or spend hours doing my makeup, as these outdated definitions suggest that I should. Does this mean I am not feminine? What about women who are strong, independent and resilient? Does this make them defeminized? We wanted to find out what people really thought, so we asked our friends, fellow students and teachers about their reactions to some questions. The first question we asked was, what words come to mind when we say feminine? The overall responses seem to reflect the fact that we generally associate the word feminine with the visual appearance of a woman. Often these responses partially resemble the outdated definitions that we saw earlier, and this for us highlights the effect that the media has had on our perception of what it is to be feminine. However, there are encouraging aspects of the responses too. The second question we asked was, do you feel limited or restrained at all by your gender? Often the responses followed a certain pattern. As age increased, as did the awareness of limitations. As people looked more and more towards their futures, they became more aware of society's expectations and as a result felt more limited. Finally, we asked, how would you like to see femininity defined? The overall consensus seemed to be that femininity is somehow redundant. In a world where the lines of sexuality and gender expectations are continually blurred and that the definition needs to change. Why should we let an outdated definition and outlook be the benchmark of our opinions on femininity? It's simple, we shouldn't. Our message is that we as women should be allowed to define ourselves. However, the media constantly dictate to all women, especially young girls, how they should act and look, ultimately affecting our perception and expectation of ourselves and other women. This causes conflict. As each woman is unique, therefore cannot be forced into a mould, the pressure to act and behave in a certain way is one of the many factors influencing body dissatisfaction. As you can see, there are many factors, and our perception of what it is to be feminine is certainly part of the issue. All women have different body types, in the same way all women have different eye colour and hair type. Unlike eye colour, however, body type is put into five categories. Apple, pear, top-heavy, hourglass and athletic. <coughs> and in our society, there are preferences to certain female body types. This so-called perfect minority, they get the most publicity, leaving many ordinary women to feel that they are the anomaly. The obsession with size, shape and perfection is ultimately unhealthy, which is reflected in the statistics. A recent Telegraph article showed that a third of women couldn't bear to purchase clothing in their correct size. Two-thirds avoided their own reflections and a third had rejected sex due to body horror. Half avoided exercise in public, believing this inappropriate for a woman over the size of 14 when the UK average is a 16. If this is the result of negative influence on adult women, what is it like amongst young girls? The truth is terrifying, with fat being the ultimate insult and thinness and looking well beyond our years outweighing happiness as the ultimate goal. A survey by Girl Guiding in 2013 found that of girls aged 11 to 21, 87% thought that a girl was judged on her appearance. One in five 7 to 11 year olds had been on a diet. Here are some of the methods which that girls aged 11 to 16 make to their appearance. So 
altering school uniform to be shorter or tighter, wearing revealing or fashionable clothes they find uncomfortable, shaving or waxing their legs, using tanning products, wearing makeup, wearing a padded bra, shaving or waxing their bikini line. NHS figures show that the number of pre-teens treated in hospital for eating disorders has tripled in four years. We must change these influences on our children's ideas. Girls are growing up believing that what it is to be a woman, to be feminine, is to have a thin figure. Girls should be brought up knowing that a body isn't just hips, stomach and thighs. It is a heart, brain and lungs which must live life to the full and smile. Here we took inspiration from the Bare Face campaign and we asked some girls to take off their makeup and smile for us. When looking into this topic, I've been constantly reminded of how I used to feel extreme pressure to look and behave in a certain way. I'm not saying that the media drove me to hate myself, but it certainly didn't help. With messages such as, you don't fit the mould, you aren't skinny enough, you aren't clever enough. I felt imperfect in a supposedly perfect world, and to be perfect was my personal driver. However, I realised that this attitude made me feel more and more miserable as I was ultimately trying to change who I was. I believed this well into my teenage years, which is certainly not healthy, and wrongly assumed that I was in fact alone, when in fact many women feel the same way. My amazing sister felt similarly, and that's when I realised that we are all wonderful, unique people, and that we must learn to love ourselves. I now believe in myself more, and have realised that I should not shrug off an achievement or a compliment as something that is not special, but to absorb it. I've realised that we should all live life to the full and that even though the media seem to portray what we don't have or aren't, we should remember what we do have and that we shouldn't torture ourselves with diets and comparisons, but we should live life to the full. Change is happening and a growing awareness of the issue will lead to it being overcome. So what does the future hold? How would you like your daughter or your granddaughter or your friends to think about themselves? We believe that the future can be bright, providing that we are encouraging and supportive of each other. So, define, define yourself. yourself. <laughs>